Good morning, everyone. Get a hymn, the 162. And we're going to repeat that first verse with everybody singing. We'll sing all three verses, 162. Let's do our very best as we sing this morning. Let's stand. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. Everyone, ready? To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life an atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer. That's right. Yes. Let's depend her who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. And give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport. When Jesus we see, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you here. Great singing this morning. That's great and wonderful. I think about that last verse, and uh, it gets down there near the end, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Well, that's going to be a great day. Isn't it? I think about the writer. You know who the writer was? Fanny Crosby, blind. And boy, I tell you one thing, the first face she saw, Jesus. Think about that. Pure and higher and greater will be. Boy, she could write about it. And uh, it's going to be an exciting day. And while we're here, a little bit on heaven on earth, being able to be with God's people and worship together. We're looking forward to it today. Glad to have uh, Brother Fox here with us. And uh, Brother Fleming brought a great Sunday school lesson. And uh, he and his wife and boys are here. And we're just excited, looking forward to a great week. And uh, I'm excited about this service. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on every part of it. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the wonderful privilege it is to be able to be in your house today. Lord, I thank you for those who have gathered here this morning, those that are visiting with us. Lord, we're so grateful they came our way today. Uh, Lord, I pray that in every part of this service, from these opening hymns to the last amen, may you get all the glory and honor that's due to your holy name. Lord, I pray if there be any that does not know you as personal Savior, that today would be the day they would trust you. And know for sure that heaven is their home. Lord, for, all, for those of us who know you as Savior, Lord, speak to our hearts. Uh, Lord, we've come here to hear from heaven. And so I pray that you would uh, do a great work in our hearts. And may we already say right now in the opening parts of this service that we will be obedient to you. We will say yes to you as you speak to us. Do a great and mighty work here in our hearts and lives this day. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated.
snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Let's all stand together as we sing. Rescue the perish in 377. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. We for the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the penitent and child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings lie buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness, cords that are broken will vibrate once more. Rescue... That's right. Yes. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. A rescue the perishing. Duty demands it. Strength for thy labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way. Patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing. Yes. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our men are coming this way. In just a moment, if you're visiting with us, God bless you for being here. They have a packet of information they want to put in your hand. They'll make their way back to you. And as they do, if you just lift your hand, they'll make sure to get that packet in your hand. There's a card on the inside. If you'd fill it out, leave it with us in the offering plate in just a few moments. And we'll have a record of your visit. God bless you for being here today at Calvary Independent Baptist Church. If you look at the bulletin with me, just a few things I want to make special note of on the inside of the bulletin here. Our missions revival gets underway today, and as I said just a few moments ago, we heard a great lesson from the book of Ephesians in the Sunday school hour. We're looking forward to the message in just a few moments. My brother Fox, I trust you'll make plans to be here uh, all the way through uh, tonight, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Allow the Lord an opportunity to speak to your heart. Amen. And uh, Brother Lancaster will be joining us on Tuesday. He'll be here Tuesday evening and Wednesday evening with us, and we're looking forward to him being here as well, he and his wife, Julie. And just looking forward to a great week and uh, make plans to be a part of it. If you haven't signed up for the meal Wednesday night, let me encourage you to do that. There's a sign-up sheet out in the lobby there you can do that on. And then this coming Saturday, the teenagers are hosting uh, this uh, parents' night out. If you haven't signed up for that, let me encourage you to do that. That's from 5 to 9 this coming Saturday night. And they need to have a, a good number to work with those. Uh, so if you plan on doing that, make sure and sign up. And then next Sunday night, our monthly fellowship will celebrate birthdays, anniversaries uh, for the month of November. And you see what to bring there corresponding with the letter of your last name. I encourage you about that. And then if you have any other items, uh, uh, I think we've already got them all taken care of. And we just want to thank everyone for bringing in those items for the food bank for the Thanksgiving meal. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Some upcoming events there. Our board members will have our meeting on next Sunday afternoon. Men prayer breakfast on the 7th. Our ministry at the Presbyterian Retirement Community. Make special note of that. That's on a different day. That's on a Thursday. We normally do that on the Tuesday. Uh, but because of the holidays, the Christmas holidays, we'll be doing that on the Thursday, December the 19th. Our Christmas program uh, here uh, will be on the 15th. That's a Sunday the 15th in the evening service. And then our young people will have a special program they'll be bringing on Tuesday the 17th from our academy. And that'll be our midweek service. That's a Tuesday night, Tuesday night the 17th. Give Sunday on the 22nd. 
Christmas Eve service on the 24th and monthly fellowship on the 29th. If you haven't signed the birthday and anniversary cards for the month of December, let me encourage you to do that. They're out there and available uh, for you. On the back, some prayer requests, some folks that we're praying for, they're listed here. I spoke with Mrs. Ronke this past week, and she said that her treatment is going well. She's not ill and uh, just tired uh, very quickly. So I do be praying for her and uh, all others that are listed here as well we're praying for who are recovering and have health needs. And then our shit of the week is Brother Jonathan Kurtz and his address and information are given for you. If you can send him a note or stop by and see him, I know that would be an encouragement to him. We read the letter in the Sunday school hour uh, from the Hendricks men who have been praying for their ministry uh, there with the first Bible. You see our offering and attendance totals from last Sunday and service opportunities throughout the week, of course. And uh, this week, our meeting going on all through Wednesday, and I trust you'll make plans, as I've said, to be here and be a part of that. Pray for our soul winning visitation as well. And we'll have some special times this week to be able to do that. And uh, so be praying for that as well. We praise the Lord for the young man that received Christ on last Saturday. We're going to continue. Tyler, that's his name. Uh, pray for Tyler that he would grow in the Lord. Amen. And we'll be following up and helping him and encouraging him. We're going to sing a little chorus together. And the chorus is chorus number eight there in your chorus book. That all the earth may know, that all the earth may know. With the gospel of Christ we must go. That all the earth may know. Let's stand together. Winnie's going to play it and we're going to sing it. Chorus number eight. That all the earth may know. That all the earth may know. we must go that all the earth may know let's try it this way ladies that all yes amen amen That was a sweet sound. Now, men, let's sing it out. That all the earth may know. That all the earth may know. With the gospel of Christ we must go. Through. Do you know where that comes from? That comes from the story of the life of David. That's where it comes from. First Samuel chapter 17. And you remember he went out there to face Goliath and he told Goliath that all the earth may know that there's a God in Israel. That's right. He lifted up Goliath's head there. God gave him the victory. And uh, hey, we have victory in the Lord Jesus Christ and we need to tell the yeah. whole world the gospel message and uh, let allow the Lord to thrust us out. That's what he said, the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth. You know what that word send forth? It means thrust out labors. And we need labors, no doubt about it. Right here and all around the world. You greet some of their next two and tell them you glad to see them here this morning.
Very good. As you make your way back, we'll sing it one more time that all the earth may know. Here we go. That all the earth may know. we must go that all the earth may know very good if you remain standing I just want to read a card here it says our thanks you're so special and so appreciated thank you for the prayers cards and food during the passing of my mother this church family is a blessing to our family Larry Anderson and family and we love brother Larry been praying for him it's good to see uh, Lauren Good to see Jeremy and Megan and Trent, and uh, they're here with him this morning in the service. We praise the Lord for that. Good to have you all today, and uh, that's great. And others visiting with us. We've got some folks from Philadelphia visiting with us from Brother Penichetti's church, and it's good to see them here with us as well. And, and uh, Ryan's got some family here. Got some of the uh, got the brother-in-laws with you today. That's good, and uh, praise the Lord for that. Did I miss anybody? If I missed anybody, I think the Samuels has got a neighbor here as well. I'm sorry if I missed you, but it's good to see you. Glad you're here uh, in the service today. We praise the Lord for it. Gentlemen, if you'll come, we're ready to receive our offering. Trust you'll give and give generously. Uh, Brother Fox has brought along a good uh, many CDs back there. They're a blessing. We own some in our house, and he's got this, uh, this one here. How many of these volumes you got? Seven different volumes. Seven different volumes of Bible songs for kids, Scripture songs, Scripture set to music. And then this one here, is this one new? It's fairly new. This one is the Mountain Christmas. How many of you like uh, the guitar and the mandolin? And what yeah. else you got here? The dobro, the fiddle, and the band. How many of you like that? You like that yeah. type of thing? I like that type of thing. And uh, that's back there. And uh, Christmas music there. And many other things back there. Any donation. Now, normally they sell on the website, they sell for $15. But any donation. So, uh I encourage you, stop back by there, don't race out, stop back by there and uh, visit there, see what you got. I think it's very important that we fill our homes with good, sound, godly music, Amen. and that's what this is, and so I encourage you to do that, all right? God bless you, appreciate it. Brother Joe Carr, would you lead us in prayer, please, sir? Amen.
one. I got caught away in the offertory. It's my turn to lead singing. That's a great offertory, was it not? Stirred my soul. 401. Set my soul afire, Lord. It's a song about having some passion for ministry. And we should. Let's stand as we sing. 401. Set my soul afire, Lord. Now sing with all of your hearts. Everyone. Set my soul afire, Lord, for thy holy word. Burn it deep within me, let your heart be heard. Millions grope in darkness in this day and hour. I will be your witness, fill me with thy power. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness. Waiting for thy word Set my soul afire, Lord Set my soul afire Set my soul afire, Lord For the lost in sin Give to me a passion As I seek to win Help me not to falter, never let me fail. Fill me with thy spirit, let thy will prevail. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Set my soul afire, Lord, in my daily life. Far too long I've wandered in this day of strife. Nothing else will matter but to live for Thee. I will be your witness. As you live in me, set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Amen. Yes. Of thy saving power, millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord. Set my soul afire. Amen. You may be seated. Shut 
Thank you, ladies. Appreciate that song and the truth of that song. It's a real joy to have Evangelist Byron Fox here. He's the founder of Bible Truth Music and the God Bless America Crusade. We got a special three minute video on the show tonight about the God Bless America Crusade. And uh, so I trust you'll make plans, of course, to be here this evening. But it's great to have him. I'm going to ask him to come and share with us what the Lord's laid on his heart for this hour. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, preacher. Open your Bibles to John chapter 3, if you would. Good morning. It's great to see you. I'm glad you've come. Be uh, sad if nobody came today, you know. <laughs> be lonely. John chapter 3, famous chapter in the Word of God. My name is Byron Fox. Hardly anyone can get that name right, Byron. I get called uh, Baron and Brian and Brain. No, I, that one never comes up. But uh, <laughs> most folks just call me Brother Fox. And it's my great delight to be at this church. I've known of this church for a long time, and you've gotten music from our company for a long time. We serve about 6,000 churches across America with uh, choir music, hymnals, Christmas cantatas, and piano music, and so forth. And we've had some good music this morning. The choir did a fine job, and we had a good time. I appreciate uh, Brother Smith letting me work with his choir, and uh, Miss Wendy let me play her piano. Miss Wendy does a fine job playing the piano for us, too. And... Um, I just uh, I wish we had this other instrument in operation. And boy, our our offertory was wonderful today. That stirred me up. You saw it caught me. I was just still enjoying it. It was my turn to lead singing, but uh, it was wonderful. I love uh, instrumental music when it's done like that. It was done well, and I believe unto the Lord. All of this is unto the Lord, right? That's why you're here, isn't it? It's for God to have His way with us and for us to worship Him. And glorify him. Boy, a good Sunday school lesson in this in this room right here. A good Sunday school lesson. Brother Fleming taught a remarkable lesson. I, I praise God for it. It helped me. You know, the Bible will help you. If we'll let it, the Bible and God will help anyone in this room who will let God help them. And I want God to help me today, don't y'all? I said the word y'all. I explained that to the choir last night. I am from the South. You wouldn't know that, I'm sure, from this little bit of an accent that I have. <laughs> but when you come from lightning bug holler, you have an accent and you have some special words. I gave most of my special words up. <laughs> words like ort. I, I thought everybody ought to know what that meant, you know. But that's not really a word, and so I gave that one up. I try to speak English these days, but I held on to the word y'all, and I held on to it on purpose to remind me of where I came from, lightning bug holler. <laughs> Three families up that holler, you call it, and uh, we were the middle family and a lot of lightning bugs. <laughs> they were everywhere at night. We just kind of glowed at nighttime, you know. We had a wonderful time, all those chickens and livestock and all that and farming that was good for a boy to grow up, eating squirrel, all that kind of stuff, you know. Had a good time as a boy. I'm having a good time today. It's just great to be in God's house. And then this is Missions Revival. I'm excited about that. You're going to come back tonight, aren't you? You know, we have a service tonight, 6.30, 5.30 for the choir, 6.30 tonight. Would it help if everybody in this room came back? Oh, I think it would help. If you normally do not come on Sunday nights, I wish you would make that a special mission for you, just to come back. It will help the meeting if you'll come. It'll help all of us. And then uh, these folks from Brother Penichetti's church, raise your hands. Where are you? Yeah, I greeted you all on the way in. You were the one. I saw donuts in the car. I offered to carry them in, you know, and they kept them in the car, you know. <laughs> I know where that car is. I, <laughs> get me a donut after a while, you know. Brother Penichetti is a wonderful pastor. I was just in inner city Philadelphia about two or three weeks ago over at Brother um, uh, Joe White's church and at uh, Brother Dominic Penichetti's church. And uh, we had a great time. We praise God for that. I do hope you'll stop by and get some of these CDs. Miss Nancy's going to help me back there. And they really are any size donation. You go back there and, and give as God would uh, have you do. And get some good Christian music. I do believe Christian homes ought to have Christian music in them. And so we'll take advantage of this. And uh, don't write checks to Miss Nancy. <laughs> uh, no matter what she might tell you. 
uh, write the check to Bible Truth Music or you can give a little cash. John chapter 3 and verse 16 is I guess the most famous verse in all the Bible. And a uh, preacher said, just preach what's on your heart this morning. The gospel is on my heart. This revival that we're having, this missions revival, we've got a big mission. What's that? To get the gospel to everybody in this world. About seven billion people. And we better get after it. We better get the gospel out. The gospel. I'm talking about the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the word revival. Missions revival. Revive. Re, which means again. And vive, which means life. Life. Again. There is a lot of things in our churches that need to come to life again. Um, I mean, lots of things. For example, I'm, I, let me stop right here. Do we need revival? Yes, we do. All right. Nothing is dynamic until it is specific. Or right, specifically, what kind of revival do we need? Do we need a revival of right speech? Well, yeah. Yeah. Christians ought to talk like Christians. Don't you think so? I don't believe that any of our church members need to go out of here and use some dirty language, some curse words, but we need to have some wholesome Christian language. Do you think we need a revival of purity in America? Yes. And around the world, we need a revival of purity. That needs to come to life again. I mean Christians living the noble Christian life in purity. I, listen, is modesty still right? Yes, it is. I am so proud of all of our ladies at our church that dress modestly. Wouldn't all the men say amen to that? Amen. I'm proud of our ladies. Our ladies who want to keep themselves unspotted from this old dirty world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We want that. And we need a revival of that all across America. And I'll tell you this. Every kind of revival that we need, God can supply. God can do it. And my God shall supply all your needs. Lord, we need revival. And God can give it to us this week. And this mission soul winning, getting the gospel to everyone. That needs to come to life again. Now I've seen it happen. I was out in a little town in Iowa. Glenwood, Iowa. Little place. 2,000 people. Y'all can kind of relate to that, can't you? Yeah, not a big town, a small town. I mean, Quarryville has about 5,000 people. This place had 2,000 people. A uh, small place. I like little town. And uh, uh, here I was out in this little city, this little town um, in Glenwood, Iowa. And I challenged all the people. I said, let's start soul winning throughout this town. Let's start telling everybody we see about Jesus Christ and about his good gospel. Well, about three or four days into it, I gave a tract to a man. And this man said this to me. He said, what is going on over at that church? He said, that's the seventh one of these things that I've gotten this week. Hallelujah. That's the way it ought to be. Do we want a revival of missions this week? Well, two or three of you all do. Do we want a revival of missions this week? Well, then we better get on to the mission. And uh, Brother Fleming, I believe, is a good missionary. I heard him teach this morning, and I'm glad we support him. But it's not just him that needs to be busy getting the gospel out and teaching the Bible. If you're saved, you're a missionary. And you've got a mission. That's to tell folks about Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says it this way. Look at your Bible. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Now that verse is only 25 words long. But those 25 words are, is what the mission's all about. Us getting this verse and the truth of this verse, the gospel, to everybody in this world. Tonight I'm going to show that little video, God willing, about this crusade we just had in Charlotte, North Carolina. 77 independent Baptist churches working together to get the gospel out to one of the major cities in America. We printed one million gospel door hangers and pieces of literature. One million. And we didn't quite get all of those out. We got out about three quarters of a million of them out before the meeting took place. That's not too many. That's four tons of gospel literature. In 40 days, Independent Baptists got to work to get the gospel out. Well, you know, um, somebody told me that on the backs of our door hangers, the front door, front page told all about the, the front side told all about what time the meeting was, where the meeting was being held, all that sort of thing. And someone tried to tell me, let's not put any gospel on them. Let's try to get them to the meeting and then give them the gospel. I... <laughs> I went to a little burger place called Cookout Burgers. It's in North Carolina. There's 185 of those little stores. I mean, look at me. I eat, man. Cookout is based out of Greensboro, North Carolina. 185 stores in their chain. And on the bottom of their French fry container, they put a Bible verse. On their napkins, they put a Bible verse. Everything they print, they put Bible on. I took a picture of that with this phone, and I sent it to that man who said, don't put any Bible on these things. Don't put any Bible. I said, I said if the hamburger place is going to put something on, I said, we're going to put something on, friend. <laughs> and we printed one million copies of John 3.16. And it helped Charlotte. We saw hundreds of people get saved. Hundreds. I read the Bible. I read John 3.16 off those door hangers to person after person in Charlotte, North Carolina, who had never heard John 3.16 in their life. I'll tell you more about it in a few minutes. I'm telling you, we've got to get this gospel out. We need a revival of soul winning. We need a revival of sharing the gospel. John 3.16 is a religious man who is hearing this for the first time. His name is Nicodemus. Yeah, he's religious. But he's a lost man. You can be religious and be lost and on your way to hell. I don't want anyone to go to hell. And neither does the Lord. God made a way for everyone to be saved. There's not one in Pennsylvania anywhere that is so bad they can't get saved. Oh, God can. Wait, listen, where, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. <laughs> God can save us. John 3, 16, let's go through it word by word quickly. It starts out, uh, someone divided the verse up this way. <coughs> For God so loved the world, that being God's grace, that he gave his only begotten son, that being God's gift, uh, that whosoever believeth in him, that's God's gospel, and then but have everlasting life, that's God's glory. Look, look at each word, for God. The first two words, for God. Friends, there is a God. I've had some people get upset with me about these crusades and these revivals and all that. We were doing a God Bless America rally there in Augusta County, Virginia, this past July, July the 6th and the 7th. We're in a great big metal building. Had a town of 5,000. They had 4,998 people in that town. They needed two more people to have 5,000 people. Our biggest night, we had 2,100 people come to the meeting. We worked hard at it. God honors work. He blesses work. We worked at it. God was blessed. But in that, that little city and in that county, the atheists got upset with Brother Fox. They began writing blogs. They began writing emails. Telling how bad Brother Fox was and this God bless America crusade. All the atheists, the atheists were upset. You know, sometimes you're defined also by who gets upset. You know, one of them wrote me and said, uh, "said Mr. Fox, I can't even go to the landfill 
without somebody giving me a piece of your literature. Hallelujah. And uh, he thought they were they thought they were upsetting me. No, I'm not upset about atheists writing about the God bless America crusade. I'm thankful. God even has the atheists talking about the God bless America crusade. There is a God in heaven. You better know that. Larry King was a famous interviewer on TV. And one time he was being interviewed himself. Larry King was being interviewed. A fellow named Bryant Gumbel was interviewing Larry King. And uh, Bryant Gumbel asked him this question, that question, and so forth. And he said, Larry, Larry King, let me ask you a question. He said, Larry, if you could ask God one question, what would you ask God? Larry said, I'd like to ask God this. God, do you have a son? That's a great question. And there's a great answer. Yes, God has a son named Jesus Christ. <laughs> this verse starts with God, for God. And then it says this, so loved, for God so loved. That word love is wonderful. How do you define love? Well, it's pretty hard to define. Just the word love appears 56 times in the book of John. This word love, uh, you look it up in the dictionary and it means something like this, to have a feeling, to have affection, to have regard for, to be strongly attached, to be attracted, to hold dear. And there's some uh, synonyms for love in the dictionary. Words like this, affection, charity, devotion, fondness, liking, passion. Love is pretty hard to define. It's so wonderful, so magnificent to be loved. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody does. It's normal. It's natural. If you don't want to be loved, something's wrong with you, man. You're abnormal. It's normal to want to be loved. That's common among every. God so loved. That word loved. I mean, how do you define that? And then it says he so loved. My wife and I have these cell phones. The church in Dallas gave it to me, gave one to me. It's, it's an iPhone. This one's a little bit outdated now. It's an iPhone 4S. You know, these things get out, outdated pretty fast, you know. But this thing's pretty magnificent. You know, when I was a boy, uh, you know, you ate blackberries. When I said, boy, you got a blue tooth from eating a blackberry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all that changed. Now we're talking on our ears and all kind of things, you know. We got these blackberries. I mean, this is an iPhone. We had blackberries, now they're iPhones. And, um, you know, pretty magnificent. You surf the web, you can text, all these things. And I'm learning how to do all that. They've drugged me into the 20th century. Oh, no, this 21st century. They've drugged me into it. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, you do all kinds of things. You can even get a phone call on these things. It's amazing. <laughs> My wife and I text back and forth. She sent me a text a few weeks back. She said, I love you so, oh, 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 oh. Put a bunch of O's on it. I love you so, oh, 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 much. Well, I like that. It's good for a wife to love her husband, don't you think? I'm thankful for it. My wife Renee is my best friend on this earth. And then I open God's love note here in the Bible. This little love note right here in John 3.16. For God so loved. God's love is indescribable. It's beyond what I can try to tell you today. It's so wonderful. It's so magnificent. God's love for people is it, it, its beyond what I can tell you. It's, it's indescribable. It's unbounded. Let me ask you this. Can you earn God's love? Well, no. Do you and I deserve God's love? Well, no. Do we have God's love? Well, yes. Thank the Lord. Well, why? Uh, this way. God said it this way in Jeremiah 31. God said, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. <laughs> That's wonderful. 
I can't do one thing to cause God to love me more. And I can't do one thing to cause God to love me less. He's just chosen to love us. Little children's song goes this way. Wide, wide as the ocean, high as the heaven above, deep, deep as the deepest sea is my Savior's love. It's true. It's true. There may be people in this room who die and go to hell because you said no to the Lord. There may be a lot of folk in our town who die and go to hell because they said, Lord, we don't want you. I reject you, Lord. People can do that. and They'll die in their sin and go to hell, but they won't go to hell unloved because God loves everybody in this city. And He loves everybody in this whole world. He loves everybody in China. I've been to China. And God loves everyone in China. He loves everybody in this whole world. For God so loved, it says the world. He loves the whole world. One fellow named Walter Wilson said it's amazing. God loving the whole world. He said no person can do that. In fact, Walter Wilson went on and said, in fact, he said, I have a hard time just loving all my relatives. <laughs> you know, there are some relatives kind of hard to love, you know. But God found a way to love everybody in this world. I mean, God loves everybody in spite of all of our faults. He loves all. He loves the Jews. He loves the Russians. He loves the Arabs. And glory to God, He loves all the Americans too. God loves everybody. He loves all people. As a little boy, I learned this song. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. That is true. God loves every people group in this world. He loves the civilized. God loves the civilized. But God loves the heathen too. God loves the Baptists. I'm a Baptist, and you're in a Baptist church today. I'm a Christian first, but I'm a Baptist. And God loves the Baptist, but hallelujah, God loves the Methodists. God loves the Presbyterians. God loves the Lutherans. God loves the Catholics. God loves everybody. God loves, and we'll blow your mind right here, God loves the politicians. Yeah, it's true. And praise God for a few godly politicians. Hallelujah for that. But God loves every politician. God loves the liberal. He loves the conservatives. God loves communists. God loves socialists. You can't name anyone that God does not love. God loves preachers. Hallelujah. But God loves bartenders. Now this Bible, 70 different places, the Bible condemns alcoholic beverage. But God loves every bartender. He does. That's amazing, isn't it? I went to preach in a church out in California. I get out there, and uh, the, the preacher had been on the East Coast, and he got delayed because of bad weather, and he didn't make it for the Sunday service. He called me and said, Brother Fox, just take us. Well, I'd never been to the church, but the preacher authorized me, so I just took over. And uh, we had a good time, and I preached the gospel. And an invitation, a fellow named Rob came forward to get right with God. And Rob got right with the Lord that day. And he wanted to get baptized. He said, I'm not the pastor of this church. I said, we're going to wait on that until the preacher gets here. But there's another reason why I wanted to wait on him too. Because Rob owned the liquor store in town. And I wanted to see if it was real. I've seen people pretend to get saved, and I'm not for it. But God can save a man who owns the liquor store. That was on Sunday. Praise the Lord, the preacher made it there, the pastor made it there for Monday. And we baptized Rob. And by the way, by Wednesday, Rob was out of the liquor business, and he was working for the sheriff's department. <laughs> Quite a change, wasn't it? And now, now he's locking people up for DUIs used to serve him, but now he's on the other side. But Rob works with young people in the church there now. God can save a man who owns the liquor store. That's part of our mission is getting the gospel to lost sinners. Every lost sinner. Every lost sinner. 
And God loves everyone, everyone. He loves the gamblers. He loves all colors of people, all individuals, all social groups. He loves them all. I've got to tell you, though, yes, God loves sinners, but God hates sin. Yes, He does love criminals, but God hates and despises crime. God does love rebels, hallelujah, but God despises rebellion. God hates lying. All these sin, I could just keep naming sin. Sin separates man from God. But hallelujah, Jesus Christ spans the gulf. Hallelujah. But now rejecting Jesus Christ will cause people to go right to hell. There is a hell. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave. That he gave. That he gave. You know, this world knows so little about giving. A little while ago, we gave our offerings. You know, this world knows so little about giving, especially about sacrificial giving. See, this is sacrificial giving in verse 16. Sacrificial giving. God didn't give gold or silver. He gave his son. He gave Jesus. You know, the most extreme punishment allowed by Roman law was death by crucifixion. But it wasn't just the physical torment. Hey, it was not just the physical torment. The Bible says He, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us. See, all of my dirty, rotten sin was placed on Jesus. All of it. Why did Jesus do that for me? Why did He do it for you? Because he loved. The cross of Jesus Christ spells L-O-V-E. Jesus loved us. He died for us. God gave his son. I've got a son. He's 29 years old. <laughs> How about that? Hard to believe. He's going to pass me up in age soon. My son. I'm jealous over my son. I love him. I'm going to tell you a little story. One time he and I were invited to play in a in a putt-putt tournament. Are you kidding me? We were playing with professional putt-putters. Men who make a living playing putt-putt. Are you kidding me? We'd, had, we'd played a game of it. Somebody saw us and said, you guys are pretty good. Why don't you all play in this professional putt-putt tournament? <laughs> okay. This was 14 years ago. My son was 15 years old. And uh, we got in that professional putt-putt game. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I play putt. And um, we're in there playing 54 holes and so forth. And, man, my son was nervous. I mean, you can you feel the pressure? You get up there and all these professionals watch you. And uh, my son got up on the third hole. He was in the group ahead of me. And and he was nervous. You'd be nervous too. He is 15 years old. What am I doing here? He hit a real soft shot. Just went a few inches or maybe a foot or two. And uh, one of those professional putt putters said, what are you, a sissy? I heard him say that. And before I knew it, I was standing right beside the man. I said, you know, if his daddy hears you say something like that, he may beat the daylights out of you. <laughs> Pastor, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. It just happened. The man said, are you his, are you his daddy? I said, I am his dad. <laughs> I'm going to stop the story right there. crazy about my son. Aren't you? Don't you? Mamas, you love your children. Daddies, you love your boys and girls. I love my daughter. Hallelujah for a family. I've got two children in heaven. Oh, listen. Daddies love their children. Think about this. Can you imagine seeing your son abused? Can you imagine seeing your son spit upon can you imagine your son being killed? The 
Bible says in Mark, they killed Jesus. See, God gave, didn't he? Everything I'm telling you is true, friends. God so loved the world that he gave. Did Jesus... Did, did God Almighty have the power to stop it? Yes, He could have, but He gave, friends. He gave His Son. It says that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave His only begotten Son. That's what the verse says. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. His only begotten Son. Uh, There's a little boy one time. A little boy. Daddy was trying to teach him to, uh, to memorize John 3.16. Now, son, I'm going to help you. He's working with his son, trying to help him learn John three sixteen. So here's the boy. You know, the little boy's trying to say the to say the verse for his daddy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only forgotten son. The little boy got it wrong. He said, "For God." You know when I heard that, I thought, you know, it's tragic that most folks have forgotten Jesus. A lot of folks in Pennsylvania haven't even had one thought about God Almighty today on Sunday. Haven't turned a smiling face toward him in years. Now we have in this room, haven't we? We're so glad for Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that Jesus Christ saved me in 1972. I know that I'm going to heaven because of me. No, because of Jesus. He saved me, and he'll save anybody in this town. It's our mission to tell folks this good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's what the Bible says here in John 3, 16, that whosoever, that means everybody, friends. That means everybody, whosoever. And friends, all have sinned. And that means all need a Savior. And whosoever will will come to Jesus Christ, he'll save them. He'll save them. He saved me over 40 years ago. And he'll save anyone. He'll save anyone and he saves everyone who comes. But it says this, whosoever believeth. You see that in that verse? Whosoever believeth. Now you've got to believe. If you don't believe, you're not going to go to heaven. If, you, if you're not a believer... If you do not repent and you do not believe, you will not go to heaven. Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And the word believe, what do you got to believe? You got to believe that Jesus is God's son. You got to believe that he went to the cross. You got to believe that he put, uh, that, had, that all of our sin was placed on Jesus. You got to believe that. You got to believe that Jesus Christ laid down his life. You got to believe that he was buried. You got to believe that he rose again. You got to believe those things. You got to believe in the resurrection. Hey, you've got to believe the resurrection. If you don't believe the resurrection, I'm talking about God raising Jesus from the dead. If you don't believe that, you're not saved. The Bible's clear, John. I mean, the Romans road that we use so often uh, uh, that God hath raised him from the dead. That's what it says in that Romans road. You got to believe that that God raised him from the dead. One of our presidents, Richard Nixon, uh, he got an earned doctorate. Got an earned doctorate. In the paper he wrote to get his earned doctorate, he was denying that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And Nixon professed to be a Christian. And I watched his funeral, and they played that magnificent hymn, Abide with me. I like that hymn. But as I heard him play that hymn, I thought, I hope he changed his mind and began to believe the resurrection because if he died without believing the resurrection, he's not saved. you got to believe. If you don't believe, you'll never go to heaven. You've got to believe. Oh, believe who? In him. Believeth in him. This is the, the Bible. Believeth in him. In who? In Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through Jesus. Salvation is in a person. That person is the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it says, should not perish. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Earlier this year, <coughs> 19 of our brave firefighters out in Arizona 
fight fire out there in Prescott, Arizona. Nineteen of them got to a, a place, to a point, where it looked like they were all going to die. And so the firefighters had one last piece of equipment to use to save themselves from imminent death. It's sort of a sleeping bag kind of thing, sort of like a little tent. And I read, I, I looked the equipment up and read about it. And this last piece of equipment to save these firefighters' lives, I read about it. And it said on the documentation, that this piece of equipment, in a time of, of dire circumstances like this, that this piece of equipment would give a firefighter a 50% chance of not perishing. That's the word that the document said. It used the word perish. It gave him a 50% chance of not perishing. And I thought about those 19 brave firefighters that all of them died that day. We lost more firefighters that day than any day since 9-11. In the last 12 years, that's the most we've ever lost in one day, fighting fires. And 19 of our brave firefighters perished that day. And a piece of equipment gave them 50% chance. I thought about John 3.16, where it talks about a 100% chance <laughs> of not going to hell. Not perishing in hell. No, you don't have to. Why? Because Jesus Christ died and it will save you from hell. I've had people tell me, well, I want to go to hell. Oh, you don't mean that. Either you don't mean it or you don't know what hell is like. No one in their right mind would want to go to hell and perish in hell forever. No. But what could you have? John 3, 16. Uh, Believe it that him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Woo! Everlasting life. <laughs> Jesus said it this way, John 14. Jesus said, I am the life. <laughs> Everlasting life. How do you get it? Because you say, hey, 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 hey. Everybody after we die, there's two kinds of eternal existence. What are they? Everlasting life and everlasting death. That's the only two kinds there are. It's either everlasting life or everlasting death. That's all there is. There is no third choice. Well, how do you get everlasting life? Believing in Jesus Christ. Whosoever believeth in Him. If you'll believe in Jesus Christ that He died for you, that He bore your sin, if you'll turn from your sins and turn to your Savior, to the Savior, you can be saved. That's our, that's our mission. We go tell everybody this. But if you say no, if you reject Jesus, you see, you either accept or you reject. If you reject Jesus, you're going to have everlasting death. John 6, 47, He that believeth on me, Jesus said, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Acts 10, 43, Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Acts 13, 39, and by him all that believe are justified. Acts 16, verse 30, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Jesus Christ did die on a cross, a rugged cross. But then on the third day, three days later, you see, with power, he rose from the dead. That's a glorious truth. And our mission tell everybody in this town and then to help others tell it to everybody in this world the truth of John 3.16 would you stand with me everybody and I wish as you stand that you'd put everything aside I wish you'd bow your heads for a moment I'm going to ask our pianist to come and get ready we're going to have what we call intation I'm going to ask our pianist in a few moments to play just as I am. We started this revival meeting with the gospel. I've tried to bring a gospel message. Do you believe the gospel? Are you saved? Everybody in this room is either saved or lost. 
if you know that you're saved, would you raise a hand and say, Brother Fox, I know I'm saved. I've trusted Christ as my Savior. Would you raise a hand real high right now if you're saved? God bless you. Amen. Is there some in this room who say, Brother Fox, I'm not saved, but I'd like to receive Christ as my Savior today. Is there anybody in this room who say, Brother Fox, I'm going to raise my hand right now. I want to receive Christ as my Savior. Would you raise a hand and let everybody know you want to receive Christ today as your Savior? Now, how are we doing on getting this gospel message to everybody in our church? How many of you right now, I want you to think right now about your neighbors. Talk about people who live on your street and in your area. How many of you believe that you got some folks that live near you that are not saved? Would you raise a hand right now? And some of your neighbors, you're pretty sure, are lost. How many of you work with somebody, you're pretty sure if they died this week, that they're not saved? Would you raise a hand if you got some co-workers that are not saved? Would you raise a hand? How many of you have some friends that you're pretty sure are not saved? Would you raise a hand? Oh, yes. How about some family members? Do you have some people in your family that you're not sure about? This is Mission Revival. I want us to get a burden on their souls about a mission of getting this gospel to our friends and our neighbors and our co-workers. Lord, please work in this invitation. In the name of Jesus, your heads are still bowed, no playing yet. If you, if you've got some of those lost folks that I was talking about, do you believe in intercessory prayer? I want to ask all the Christians that want to come and intercede in prayer for your lost friends, neighbors, and co-workers, come get on this altar and pray while the place is just come on, all that want to, and asking God to help you to be the missionary that you need to be. Come on, if you want to, husbands and wives, whole families, nothing is dynamic until it's specific. Well, let's pray specifically for some of our friends and co-workers and neighbors. God can save a co-worker. He can save a neighbor. I saw my neighbor Rodney get saved. I witnessed to him for four years, and then I saw him just show up at church. And I saw him come down that aisle and get saved. And he's one of the most faithful men at our church. Come on. We're taking time right now to pray an intercessory prayer. And we need to make some commitments ourselves to soul winning and getting this gospel to the world. That's our mission. Well, specifically, let's get into our portion of the world. How can we have world missions if we don't do missions around the corner? And on our street, across the street and around the corner,